A lot of guys I'm only here so I won't get fined. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Paul Johnson showing a sense of humor. That's what happens when you win the Orange Bowl, I guess. Oh, okay. uh, I guess things so. definitely buzzing at Georgia Tech today. The Yellow Jacket fans are finding out which players will be calling Bobby Dodd Stadium home for the next four years. Welcome back, folks. The Sports Zone signing day, and what a year it was for those Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Of course, they beat Georgia, played mm -hmm. in the ACC championship game. And we were down there in Miami when they won the Orange Bowl with that convincing 49-34 win over Mississippi State. Tech ended the season ranked eighth nationally in the final recruiting, or uh, top 25 rankings rather. A Washington County quarterback, A.J. Gray, rushed for 2,300 yards and 39 touchdowns and threw for 1,800 yards and 18 touchdowns running the spread offense. On defense, he had 10 interceptions. He was named the state's all-classification player of the year wow. by the AJC. Speaking of the AJC, let's bring back in the recording, recruiting blogger extraordinaire Michael Carvel. Michael, good news for Tech is that AJ Gray is headed there. But Michael, his coach, openly complained that more schools weren't recruiting him. So what happened and does Gray end up on offense or defense for Paul Johnson? Yeah, you know, there's a running joke in the recruiting industry that when a kid commits to Georgia Tech, he loses one or two stars. And seriously, Tech recruits, when kids commit there, they get no respect. Uh, and, they, and they sign good players. I mean, obviously they had a good team um, this year, so those players, those three stars and two stars, somebody's doing a good job of scouting and evaluating players over there. And A.J. Green, what a, a, a diamond in the rough, played at Washington County. Um, you know, they looked at him a little bit as a quarterback at first at Georgia Tech, then they decided they wanted him to play uh, defensive back where his football future lies as far as if he wants to play professionally. But who knows? I mean, you know, Georgia Tech signed that other quarterback this year who was involved in a bad uh, ATV accident. He may never be able to play again. So I get a feeling when they get to camp next year, if things don't work out or if uh, A.J. Gray maybe feels a little bit more comfortable in offense, yes. He could play quarterback for Georgia Tech, but he will be behind one of the best in the Southeast, and that's Justin Thomas. Wow. Who, by the way, since we're on signing day, we got to remind people, he flipped from Alabama to Georgia Tech in 2012. Guys? That's right, and Justin Thomas still with uh, two more years of eligibility, yeah. so if A.J. Gray wants to get on the field on the center, <laughs> he might have to wait a while. Yeah. The, the Jackets did receive a big boost when North Gwinnett's Henri St. Amour pledged his allegiance to Tech last week. The defensive end, the Jackets' highest-ranked recruit from within the state, and he had considered Michigan State, Iowa, and Stanford. And he joins uh, Gray at Tech, and so will Michael Lands Davis, who ran for more than 2,300 yards and 27 scores as a junior at Alexander High School. Now, his senior season, he actually missed three games, but still totaled nearly 4,300 yards rushing, 49 touchdowns over the course of his high school career. Lands Davis could contribute at B-back as a freshman. Greater Atlanta Christian's Tyler Cooksey announced on Father's Day that he would follow in his father's footsteps and play at Georgia Tech. His dad, Tom, played nose guard for the Jackets in the 70s. Today at GS, GAC, the younger Cooksey made it official. Cooksey, a 6'3", 220-pound linebacker who figures to flourish in Ted Roof's system. I committed to Georgia Tech on Father's Day, and it was just a very special time for us to be able to do all that. and to, For my dad and I to have that connection is something else. And... Uh, it's real, I'm really happy that I'm going to be able to make him proud and play in the flats next year. So that's really the main reason. Wow, what a cool moment for he, his father, yes. and the entire family. That's awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. Now for more on the newest group of Jackets, we head to the campus of Georgia Tech. Channel 2's Van Earl Wright spent the morning watching the national letters of intent come pouring in. All right, thanks, guys. Here with Georgia Tech head coach Paul Johnson. Uh, they were just talking back in the studio about uh, A.J. Gree and Mikhail Lance Davis and Tyler Cooksey. Which of those three do you think might have the best chance at having an immediate impact for your football team? Well, I don't know. I try not to single out anybody. We're excited about all three of those guys. I think they're all three great athletes and come from tremendous families. So, uh, you know, they're all going to get a chance to come in and contribute in the fall. Pretty drama-free signing day. You started at 7 a.m. You were done by 945. That's the way you like it. Uh, you know, I think it speaks volumes to the job our staff did and to the type of young men that we're recruiting. They pretty much stayed true to their word, and we got what we expected this morning. What kind of advantage do you have in the recruiting wars with the type of unique offense that you run? Well, I think it gives people some, some niche positions to play, and, and certainly that certain talent levels fit the offense. But I think sometimes that's overblown a little bit both ways, the positive and the negative. Uh, 
The biggest issue that helps us is probably the quarterback, being able to recruit those guys who are high school quarterbacks who, who want a chance to play that position. And then if they can't, they can move here as well as they could some other school. It's the best class you've had here? I don't know. Time will tell. We'll see. Uh, they all came highly recommended. Thank you for your time. Right. Back to you guys. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Let's get back now to Michael Carvel, live at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Michael, we know Georgia Tech, uh, Paul Johnson Company, a different approach to recruiting. Can you please explain how Georgia Tech sees things differently than other schools? Yeah, you know, you hear all the time about how Georgia Tech and other schools can't get kids or can't recruit all the kids they want because of academics, but I just don't buy that. When I was back in Augusta, I covered this great basketball player, one of the best to ever come through Georgia, who was going to be ineligible as a senior. He ended up transferring to a prep school and then went to Duke and made great grades for two years. So, so what I'm trying to say here, if there's a will, there's a way, and I think if Georgia Tech really wants somebody or Duke or whoever, they'll find a way to get them in somehow. And, uh, and the other difference, which Paul Johnson touched on a little bit, there's people out there who say that they have to have specific personnel to fit their offense, and I agree with that. I mean, I don't think Justin Thomas um, can maybe play quarterback in a, in a pro-style offense like Georgia, like, uh, like Jacob Eason or, or, or Aaron Murray. So I think there's a little bit difference there. Also with the offensive lineman, but but not too much. I, I, I'm not buying all that. You remember Justin Thomas wanted to go to uh, originally recruited by Alabama. They wanted him to play in the secondary. He said, no, I want to play quarterback. So Paul Johnson's like, hey, come to us. And all they did, DJ Shockley, as we welcome you back in, is finish eighth in the country. Uh, beat your Bulldogs, so win the Orange Bowl. <laughs> Paul Johnson trying to take that momentum and build off that with a great recruiting class. Do you think he's done enough with these group of guys to take that next step and maybe compete for a national championship here on the flats? Uh, a little bit about a strong success building from what they've done in the last few months. I think they can. Uh, you look at what they're bringing in. Obviously, we, we talked about some of the skill guys they got, but I think with Georgia Tech, really wins is in the trenches. They they are a hard-nosed football team, as we've seen this season. Uh, they, they took, obviously, we talked about they beat my dogs, and they also uh, beat a, took a very good Florida State team to the to the wire and a big Orange Bowl win, but they have the pieces in place to be very good and take that next step. Justin Thomas, we talked about, has two years left. He's only going to get better. His offense is starting to get better. They got guys like Miles Autry and C.J. Leckett who are in the wings, ready to play. His defense showed up this season. They have the tools in place right now, I believe, especially with the recruiting class they're bringing in mm -hmm. to take that next step. And they showed this year they're right on the verge of being one of those teams that could play in that, you know, big top four. All right, let's take a look at a few of the other guys that Paul uh, Johnson and the Jackets signed today. Dorian Walker rushing for 215 yards and three touchdowns in the state championship game this past season at the Georgia Dome for Mount Perrin Christian. He is a Yellow Jacket now. Uh, Brad Stewart played for Benedictine. Uh, they beat GAC for the state title this year. Uh, Michael Carvel noted, guys, that he was a wide receiver, one of the top, if not uh, the, one of the best guys in the state to play a championship game this season. Uh, the Morgan brothers from Etowa, both playing uh, and heading to Georgia Tech. Uh, they play on those lines. DJ mentioned how important it is to win the Battle of the Trenches at Georgia Tech. And Trent Sellers from Sandy Creek, he's heading to play for Paul Johnson as well. He is a defensive lineman. And that's just a few of the local kids headed to Georgia Tech this coming fall. Yeah, in fact, uh, Tech, of course, as we all know, offers its players a world-class education. But mm -hmm. how much of a factor is that on signing day for high school players across the country? You heard Michael Carvel's take a moment ago. Yeah, Michael, more on that. Let's bring you back in now here live on our show. You talk to many of these recruits, texting, training messages with them all the time. How many of them truly consider their education? Can you give me some type of percentage? Now, if you guys get me talking about Brad Stewart, this show may go three or four hours long. I think he's a, a great player, and I think he's the, probably the most underrated prospect in the state of Georgia, and he's going to Tech. He got the offer yesterday and committed and signed this morning. But to your question about education, I think it sounds good, and I think some kids think about it a little bit, but without a doubt, 100% of the reason these kids, in my opinion, pick a college is because of football, because they know if they can do well in football and reach the NFL, then whatever they could do as far as a, a, a degree or, or, or occupation, they can, they can make that money, a career's worth of money in a few NFL seasons. So I think that's the, the number one reason. If not, you'd see these guys, instead of committing to places like Duke and, and, uh, and Florida, they'd be going to Harvard and Yale because those schools, the Ivy Leagues, they can't offer football scholarships, but if they want you, 
they can offer you other scholarships where you can go for just about free. So that's my two cents. It's a valid point and, and an honest assessment. And as we rejoin DJ Shockley, you had the opportunity, of course, to, to get a great education at the University of Georgia as well. Uh, but if you're being honest about this, as a high school senior, was your mind more on playing time and, and a possible NFL future? Or was it on education mostly? I think it was a little bit of both. Uh, obviously, I'd be truthful. You want to play. Yes, you want to be a part of everything that goes on on Saturday. But in the, the day, I had people who instilled in me the importance of an education. And right now, coaches kind of say the same thing to these players. Like, okay, if they are important. If they care about their academics, then they're going to care about learning this playbook. And then they can really get into the learning process of learning a playbook, learning the education, getting that. And it means most important to the coaches because if they can't stay in school, then they won't do anything for them on the field. So it matters most to kids these days. And I think they have more people around them who tell them education comes first and everything else falls in line. And you and I are uh, the two of us, the three of us, they're all in NFL locker rooms all the time. You talk to those guys about the importance of education. We've seen a lot of guys who might have left early, but they're always going back to right. school, at least trying right. to get that education. It's important, especially when you think about you being a role model for other kids and guys leaving early, yeah, that's okay, you can do that. But at the end of the day, that degree is what's going to take you over once you leave the National Football League or leave college. That's what's going to matter most is people going to say, this guy graduated and then he did this. Here's another, another point too. Malcolm Mitchell, DeAndre Smelter, both of them very, very good early in their careers in terms of Mitchell as a freshman right. was a star. DeAndre Smelter this year, it, maybe mm -hmm. he was leaning towards the NFL. Who knows? Right. But maybe he, maybe he was leaning towards that way. Tears his ACL yep. in, in the last regular season game of the year at Georgia. Now, who knows? But if anything happens, if he doesn't move on and progress professionally the way that he hoped, has that Georgia Tech degree to fall back on, Absolutely. not a bad option. Yeah, one of the best in the country, and they can never take it away from him. Exactly.